Kevin Jackson Radio Show. You boys both have the virus? Are you sure? We're not just sure. We're HIV positive. Will you stop it with that? What part of this is funny to you? Kyle, we need to try to find what out... What part of being infected with a deadly disease do you find funny? I don't think it's funny, Kyle. Then stop saying you're not just sure you're HIV positive. This isn't funny. AIDS isn't funny. Dying isn't funny. So shut the f*** up. <clears throat> well, excuse me, Kyle, for trying to keep some optimism, you know? You know, sometimes when things seem their darkest, you just need to try and stay HIV positive. But if you want to be so HIV negative all the time... Knock I'm... it off! Right now! This isn't funny! At all! Are you sure? Yes! Are you HIV positive? Ah! Ow, f*** Kyle! Of course, that was Cartman and Kyle from South Park. We are tuning in to the disgruntled millennial portion of the Kevin Jackson radio show. It is a beautiful Friday afternoon. We are starting to see the first vestiges of the cool weather coming, and we love it down here in Florida. I, of course, am broadcasting to you live from North Florida, where I'm free from your bigotry, racism, hatred, microaggressions, and patriarchy. I am, again, Brett Siegel, the disgruntled millennial. We are here with my mom, Ellen Buckstell. She is a community activist. She is a singer-songwriter. You can get her at ellenbuckstell.com. That's E-L-L-E-N-B-U-K-S-T-E-L. You can listen to some of her music. Mom, we've been talking a lot about dad. We've been talking about the AIDS virus. We've been talking about a lot of, uh, we've been talking a lot about the, the law in California that basically allows people to sort of indiscriminately at this point, I mean, the, the, the law is being rolled back. I mean, let's just face it. People are more and more allowed to indiscriminately infect people with the AIDS virus. And I want to I want to leave the audience with a couple final thoughts from you in that regard before I play a, a song that you wrote that was adapted by a letter that my dying father who had AIDS wrote to me and my brother and my sister. My dying father from AIDS. When we talk about AIDS, always... We must remember that we are talking about a deadly human virus. Mom, t- take us out. Well, I, I, I think I'd like to basically repeat again how much um, this action negates what we tried so hard to do in the beginning of this epidemic, which was 30 years ago. And um, and I think um, there are so many people out there I, I don't like to think that there are people out there who would purposely and consciously want to infect somebody but i believe that there likely are people who would want to do that and i think that we tried hard to to encourage um you know i don't know the specific law but the idea of people being responsible for their actions and 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 having it um, having some sort of consequence for people who would be malicious about it. I definitely appreciate that. I definitely agree with that, of course. You know, if there had been the kind of screening methods that there are today, then it would have colored dad's infection a lot differently because back then they didn't have any idea how to screen for AIDS. So dad was a hemophiliac. Of course, that is a blood disease, a hereditary disease where your blood doesn't clot. You could jump on a pogo stick, fall down, start to bleed, but you wouldn't stop bleeding. So these children, these hemophiliac children, they need blood products. So at that time in the 1980s, there was no blood screening for any of that kind of stuff. There was no blood screening for AIDS. They, of course, didn't know whether or not like a bum could roll off the street with AIDS. He he could have been a, a homosexual. He could have been a drug user. He could have been just any old person who had AIDS, but they wouldn't have been able to tell. Nowadays, it makes it so much more egregious, I would say. Yeah. Nowadays, it makes it so much more egregious that we can totally prevent these things from happening. If you live the kind of lifestyle where you are having sex with lots and lots of people, you are in, it is incumbent on you to get yourself checked, to get yourself tested. I see even in Jacksonville, the bastion of the red state. This is the big part. Without Jacksonville, Donald Trump never would have won Florida. Without Jacksonville, Florida would not even be a swing state that anyone would have to worry about. It would be Miami, Broward, West Palm Beach, bastions of liberalism that would basically control the entire state, just like California. Florida could easily find itself in a situation without a place like Jacksonville as another California. And even here in Jacksonville, 
There are billboards everywhere, as far as the eye can see. Free testing, free AIDS tests, free blood tests. They do not want this. We do not want this thing to be spread. The idea is that is not to stigmatize, because a lot of folks are saying out there, they're saying, they're saying, well, if, you know, the law, the way it is now, you know, it, it prevents people from getting tested in the first place. Personally, I would think that's the exact opposite. I would think that eight years in prison would, would you would damn well better get tested before having sex if you live some sort of lifestyle that might be considered questionable. Well, and I think that on the opposite side of this issue, that along with this change in law should come some uh, education and encouragement for people who are going to either become sexually active, you know, uh, in the beginning or uh, even people who are currently sexually active that they need to know who they're sleeping with. And they need to know. I mean, when I was when your when your dad died and I and and I become sing became single all of a sudden, um, the next relationship that I got into, I had insisted that this person be tested, and he was. And I think that's definitely some great advice. You know, a lot of people. You know, you're absolutely right. There is the flip side to this situation. You know, I mean, and it's it's something that a lot of people don't think about these days. You know, a lot of folks they they poo poo abstinence, or they they poo poo the idea of you know you know looking before you leap. But you know, at the same time, this at this point with laws like this going on in California, it could absolutely prevent you. From getting from getting AIDS, you know, I mean, now nowadays when you when people are sort of be allowed to do this thing more and more and more indiscriminately. Yes. You know, I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, now, you know, like I said, never to create a stigma, but let's not defy reality here. There's no way to defy reality here. And you can't even try to defy reality here. AIDS will kill you. AIDS kills human beings. That is what it does. That is its function. And and causes great suffering in the process. Absolutely. Mom, thank you so much. Mom, Ellen Buxtel, I really want to thank you so much for joining. Brett Siegel, the disgruntled millennial on the Kevin Jackson radio show. We are going to be back with a lot more. We've got so much to talk about. We've got Harvey Weinstein. We've got the NFL kneelers. We've got so much more to talk about. I'm going to give a little run down on the M&M situation, even though it's not really that much of a situation. He's kind of a loser. Anyways, we will be back. This is the Kevin Jackson radio show. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177. Or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. Beth Cook Moranville author of Closer Than Your Breath, A Book of Hope. Hope, that wonderful, wonderful four-letter word that you may feel completely out of. I wrote this book to give you great hope. It's not too late. If fetal position is an all-too-familiar place for you, I understand. If the next 60 seconds are too long, this book is for you. Wherever you are right now, whether you're dealing with divorce or death or sickness, take hope. You are going to make it through this pain. Don't roll your eyes. I've walked this road and I know it. The best is yet to come. Closer Than Your Breath, a book of hope from author and speaker Beth Cook Moranville can be found on Amazon.com or Kindle.com. For more information, visit CloserThanYourBreath.com or on Facebook at Closer Than Your Breath.